Welcome to another edition of Coonrod's Corner. Today's topic, why are copper foil properties important in high frequency applications? Now here's your host, John Coonrod. Hello, welcome to Coonrod's Corner. My name is John Coonrod and I am a technical marketing manager for Rogers Corporation. And today I'm going to be talking about copper properties. Specifically, I'm going to be talking about some of the properties of copper and why they are important for high frequency applications. Now, in general, there are two types of coppers used in the printed circuit board industry. And uh, when you get in the details, there's a lot more to that. But as just a general statement, the two coppers are ED copper and rolled copper. ED copper stands for electrodeposited copper, and rolled copper is, as the name implies, it's a copper that's made by a rolled process. Okay, what's shown in the picture here is an electrodeposited process to create a copper foil. And the copper foil is uh, essentially drawn off a large drum, and the drum is a cathode, and then you can see the anodes as part of an electrolytic plating process. And uh, this process is very efficient. They can peel this off at the right rate to get the, the foil the thickness that you would desire. And in this type of process, the ED copper gives you a vertical grain structure. The next picture is the rolled copper and how it's manufactured. The rolled copper is actually manufactured starting with a large billet of copper, and then it's going through a series of rolling processes to get the copper to the thickness desired. And this particular process will yield a copper that is, uh, has a horizontal grain structure. Now, many times the rolled copper is called rolled annealed copper, and that may not be the most appropriate term depending on if the uh, copper actually saw the process to anneal it. So a probably more appropriate way to describe this copper would be a rolled rot copper. So after the copper foil is manufactured, typically what's done is a treatment is applied to one side of the copper. This treatment is a special treatment that's usually a metal alloy, and that treatment is there for thermal stability as well as bond enhancement. And there are many different types of treatments, and uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later. Also, uh, along with this is the other side of the copper will have a passivation applied to it, and that passivation is a very thin passivation, and that's usually the side of the copper that we call the shiny side of the copper. So normally, we will bond our substrate to the treated side of the copper, and when you look at a copper-clad laminate, you'll be looking at the other side, the shiny side of the copper. The one exception would be the reverse treat copper, and in that case, we actually bond our substrate when making the laminate to the shiny side of the copper, the side with the passivation treatment, and the treated side of the copper is actually away, and that's what the user would see. Now, due to the grain structure of these different coppers, you get different surface roughness. The ED copper will give you a rougher surface just by the nature of the grain structure, and rolled copper will give you a much smoother surface. The rougher copper surface allows more copper surface area, obviously, and more area means better bonding between the substrate and the copper. Unfortunately, the rougher copper surface also means that you have more conductor loss at higher frequencies, and you also have um, very possibly more phase distortion at higher frequencies as well. We measure copper roughness, copper surface roughness, with a laser profilometer, which is a non-contact method using white light interferometers. And uh, what we do is we normally measure the copper surface roughness for values of R sub Z, R sub T, R sub A, R sub Q. And the value that's mostly used in electromagnetics to understand losses and phase response is the RMS value, root mean square. And that's really based on the R sub Q value that we get from this laser profilometer. What I've shown here is a picture that describes um, the output of our laser profilometer showing the copper surface roughness. Now, there are many different types of ED copper foils and also different types of rolled copper foils. Uh, the ED copper foils also have different treatments along with the rolled copper foils, and these different treatments are, are there for, as I said before, either bond enhancement or thermal stability. And each of these uh, treatments can have a different effect when you're bonding to different types of substrates. The other thing is just because the surface roughness is smooth doesn't necessarily mean that you will get lower insertion loss. If the treatment is a metal alloy that has more losses, that can actually cause more insertion loss as well, even if the copper is relatively smooth. Now, we've done a lot of studies on copper and copper surface roughness and treatments, and we definitely look for that type of thing. So the coppers that we use in our high-frequency laminates most certainly are very good for high-frequency applications and low loss and also non-ferromagnetic, which can cause issues with PIM. And the chart shown here is a uh, testing from about 10 megahertz to 100 gigahertz, so obviously a very wide band type of testing. And what we're doing here is looking at microstrip insertion loss by a test method that's called differential length method. And the differential length method is essentially testing uh, circuits that are identical in every way except one being shorter than the other. 
and then subtracting the losses to get loss in dB per inch. And what's shown here on the chart is the same substrate essentially, uh, except using different copper of different roughnesses. Now the one copper is, uh, that's the smoothest one is on the 10.7 10 mil RO4835 low pro laminate. And you can see the roughness there is about 0.8 microns RMS, which is considered pretty rough. And that is obviously the one with the lowest insertion loss all the way out to 100 gigahertz. And then the other uh, substrate is the same substrate, 10 mil 4835 laminate, but in this case it's using the standard ED copper with a rougher copper surface roughness, which is about 2.8 microns. This concludes this session of Coonrod's Corner. Thank you for watching. For additional information and technical tools, if you are not already a member, Join the Rogers Technology Support Hub and gain access to calculators, technical papers, and more of Coonrod's Corner and other informational videos. Rogers Technical Information is also available at your fingertips with the Raj mobile app, available for the iPhone, iPad, and Android devices. Check it out today.